In our last tutorial, we lowered the staircase beam in our structural model on INHS first year. Um, in this tutorial, I'm going to um, work. I'm going to teach you. Uh, I'm going to teach you how you how we install um, slab element on INHS software. I'm not going to use my main project, which is the project shown on the screen. I'm going to use a sample project. I will navigate to it now. My sample project. On the, sub, on the sample project, you will see I've made some modification. I've drawn columns and beams. So what I want to do now, I want to insert um, slab in this drawing. So how do you insert slab um, in this drawing? If you move to the slab button on the member toolbar here, and the slab, there are two slab buttons on the member uh, toolbar. We have the normal slab uh, button and we have the rib slab button. The normal slab button is used for beam slab floor type or a flat or a uh, for flat slab uh, floor type. You are using a flat slab um, you want or a beam slab type you want to use uh, this slab button here. But if you are using if, if you are using a ribbed or waffle slab in your project you use this button, click on it, the wave slap property hello boss and will pop up. I'll close this um wave slap property uh, um dialog boss. Uh, my main ob the objective of this tutorial video is to explain to you how to use this slab button. Yeah, to insert slab in the model. So I'll click on this slab button, clicking on it, you'll see the slab um, property dialog box. In the slab property dialog box, we have two tabs, the general tab and a load tab. In the general tab, we have field for labels, we label the slab when you insert it. We have field for type of slab. If I should right click on this field, I will see all these um, submenu from 1 to 13 and an additional slab type. This uh, for type 1. For type 1, the slab is um, fully restrained on four edges. And this, that is the meaning of type 1 slab on line 18. Type 2, the slab is fully restrained on three edges and this continues on the long edge. For type 4, the slab is um, restrained on two adjacent edges. Um, for type 6, the slab is restrained and it has is restrained uh, along one edge of the along one edge of the beam. And for cantilever slab, you use the type 12 or 13 to define it. So if I want to insert cantilever slab on my model, I will use um 12, I'll use a uh, type 12 or 13 to be to define it on my model. So that's what this type field is all about. For the field of for the H the H field, in the H field, you um specify the thickness of slab you use in your model. If you are using a 150 mm slab, you type 150 mm there. If you are using a 250 mm slab, you type 250 mm there. For the for this field below the that and the conch uh conch curve means a uh, concrete cover. So the cover of your slab, concrete, the concrete cover of your slab is specified here. You want it, you want it to be 20, 25, 30, 35, you specify, it, you specify the value here by typing the value. Um, you don't need to bother about this two field below. And I will explain this insertion button to you. If you click on the insertion button, I'll click on it right now. Uh, this slab insertion dialog box will appear. In on the line there are four methods to insert um, slab in our model. We have the axis region method, we have the beam region method, we have the peak axis method, and we have the peak point method. Uh, this peak point method, I, I found it to be very ineffective. So I'm going to only explain the first three methods. On the axis um, region, if I should select the axis region, it means that when I, when I, take, when I, when I place my cursor on the screen between uh, four bounded axes, the axis gets selected. As you can see, where my cursor is, the cursor highlights um, my axis boundary. So I can select that boundary for my position of slab. As you click on it, the slab will be inserted. I will delete, I will delete that now. The importance of um, this axis region is when, um, is used when you don't have a um, beam region. Um, for, when you don't have beam, in an area and you want to insert um, um, slab there. As soon as I want to insert slab um, at this location, I can't use my beam region method for it because I don't have beam along the line 4 and along the line 3. So it will be best to use the axis region method in this 
in this scenario. So if I click on this point now, you see I started this lab um, using the axis region method. Uh, so that is all about the axis region method. I will delete this lab I just created by pressing delete on my keyboard. For the beam region method, uh, when you when you're using a beam region method, you just need to locate a region that is surrounded by beam. For example, look at where my cursor is. This uh, where my cursor is surrounded by uh, four beams. And you can see the beams around al along that perimeter. If I select uh, th this region, my slab will be inserted where the beam where the beams are located. Huh? You see? Um, I can also insert my uh, slab here. You see that a, a larger area is um, selected to insert my slab because that area is bounded by um, beams. So if I click on it, you see the beam um, inserted. The axis region. Assuming I want to insert um, my slab um, between um, grid, between uh, grid, uh, between this uh, grid uh, axis intersection, between grid A, between grid A. C, grid A, grid 6, grid D, and grid, grid 3. This grid 3 here, yeah, and in this region where my cursor is moving around. As soon as I want to insert my slab at that region. So the best method would be to use a peak axis, uh, a peak, peak axis uh, method. So if I show, what I just need to do uh, in using the, uh, when I'm using this method, I just need to select the axis um, that, that bounds uh, my, my slab region. So that's how you use the peak axis to insert uh, slab. To insert slab. I will check the bottom. When I when it is on peak axis method now, there's an information at the bottom that tells you how to use this method. You will see uh, it's written pick the axis surrounding the slab in sequence. You're not, not putting back and picking the first axis again, we insert the slab. This is what it means. Um, I'm using the peak axis method now. So my first axis I select is uh, grid three. So I want to pick the region where I want the slab selected. So I've, I've picked my, my first axis, I'll pick uh, grid 3. And you can see 3 is highlighted there. Yeah? I'll pick grid A. A is highlighted. I pick grid 6. Um, 6 is highlighted. I, I pick uh, grid D. D is also highlighted in the slab insertion dialog box. Now, if I want the slab, I want to pick the four axis now. So what you need to do is to pick the first axis, the first uh, grid line you choose, you, uh, you used the first green line you pick initially. If you if you pick it again, the slab will be inserted. So what I only do is to pick uh, green line three that I pick uh, the first time. So if I, I'll click on it now. You see my slab will be inserted. So these are the three methods I recommend you should use to insert uh, slab. Insert slab on your model. I will hit the list on my keyboard to remove the slab. Um, another thing I want to explain to you is um, cantilever slab. How do you insert cantilever slab um, in your model? Um, as long as I want to insert cantilever slab between a grid line which at, at, um, at beam D1 to 2. This beam, D1 to 2. This beam, yeah, where my cursor is over now. So how, you, how I will do that, I will select, um, say, type 12. And I will specify my cantilever dimension. The length value is the length of your cantilever from your supporting uh, element, the beam. So as I want my cantilever to be one, uh, 1 1.5 meters, so I enter 1,500. So the other dimension, the B slab, is the length of the slab in the other direction of the, in the other direction of your cantilever. Say you, you want the cantilever is um, five meter long in the other, say four meter long in the other direction. So I enter four meter, uh, 4,000 mm, yeah? Then what you need to do is to click two intersection points where you want the slab inserted. You have to pick the first insertion point of the beam and the second insertion point of the beam to insert your slab uh, at slab beam, to insert your cantilever slab on the beam. So I will click on a grid intersection D1 to a grid intersection D2. And I get a one, it says cantilever slab span outside the beam that it transfers to. Load outside the beam uh, span will be ignored. Okay, this is what happened because uh, as, because this uh, cantilever slab spans more than um, our uh, more than um, this beam, the beam D one to two. It's telling us that uh, this uh, small region of the slab that 
enters um, this, um, that is supported by this beam, the load will not be transferred on this beam. So I can reduce the length of the beam. I will just, if I change this to uh, 3.5 meters, 2,500, and update, you see, I've changed the length of the beam. So that's how you insert that lever slab in your model. I want to explain the second tab on the slab property dialog box, which is the load um, tab, the load, the load, um, the load tab, the load tab. In the load tab, is the first field is the self weight. Uh, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is for self weight, and Ionity calculates this value automatically for us. I will explain. I will explain this in a moment. If you remember, in one in my previous tutorial, I specified. Um, the self weight of, of, of our, the, I specify the density of the reinforced concrete as 25. What Orion does to calculate this self weight, this self weight is in kilometer per meter square. Orion will automatically multiply the depth of slab provided there by, by the density of um, the reinforced concrete. So Orion will, like with this H value, which is at uh, 120 mm, um, the Orion will say 25. The self weight specifies. I specify for this um, project is 25. So Ryan will say 25 times 0 0.12. That is the 120 mm. So if I should use my calculator, 25 times 0. Point, sorry, 0 0.12. You can see I get 3. If I should change this value to say um, 200, you see the value will be updated. 5, uh, 5 kilometers per meter square. So Ryan will Ryan calculate this value by saying 25 times. 25 times 0 0.2, and that the value is 5. So Orion automatically calculates this value uh, for you. For the dead load, this dead load there means additional dead load. The additional dead load on your slab will be due to your screed, your ties, your finishes on the on the on the structural slab, your screed, your ties. And if there is any partition load on the slab, you have to uh, factor that by uh, specifying additional dead load. Uh, for that slab. I will show you a guideline written by ICE and ISWT. Um, here you will see uh, additional dead load for slab. They say that dead load on plant should be generous and not less than the following. So say for floor finishes, creed, yeah, it should not be less than 1.8. So uh, if I'm working on a project, your minimum um, f um, um, additional load for creed should be not be less than 1.8. Me, I normally use 2 km per meter square as my general load for speed. I see for ceiling and other services, they say 0 0.5. For um, block wall partition, let's say I have block wall partition on this suspended slab, you should use a 2.5 km per meter square. So let's assume now that I have screed on the slab panel, I have ceiling, this, 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 that, that slab also supporting ceiling, and also block partition. It means that I have to use, I have to add this um, three values, 1.8 plus 0 0.5 plus 2.5 as my additional dead load. Uh, do you understand that? So, like here now, I can say that um, my slab is carrying a ceiling load, also carrying a screed, screed, a screed, a screed load. Let me finish it. So I'll say let the screed load be 2 km per meter square. Let this uh, Ceiling load be 0 0.5, so the total is 2.5. So I can just enter my 2.5 uh, in this field. But the impose load, the impose load uh, uh, is, uh, is um, determined from the use of the structure. If it's a residential structure, the typical value is around uh, 2 kN to 2.5 kN, 2 kN per meter square to 2.5 kN kilo, uh, kilo per meter square. If it's, an, if it's a commercial building, the load can be as I have um, 3 kN per meter square. If it's a building where people congregate, the load can be as high as 5 kN per meter square. So that is, um, uh, the field is in kN per meter square. So I can decide to uh, put 5, uh, 5 kN per meter square in that field. The parapet wall, I don't think you should bother yourself about that. For the relative level of the slab, just as I can lower my beam element on this software, I can also lower my slab element on the software. Once I will show uh, you, I want to show you something. Assuming, uh, let me change the type, slab type to one. Assuming uh, insertion point to beam region. Assuming I insert um, a, a slab here. Look how it's inserted in my 3D. You can see that the slab is inserted at the top of my beam. Let's say I want the slab to be um, 30 cm 
down from the top of the brain. That 30 cm is 300 mm. I can just um, go to the load and specify minus 300. Okay, minus 300. And I will update. You will see what happens. You can see the slab drops down uh, by 300 mm. So you can use this uh, field here to control the position of your slab in your model. And also this bus, you can check it if you want to check it, if a uh, slab does not contribute to flood di di and diaphragm, it means that if you check it, as you are saying that the slab does not act as a transmitting medium, as a medium to transfer a um, lateral load to the vertical, uh, to the beam and vertical structural member. So the, the, the damage is uh, slab does not, is there a supporting system, is there a supporting element for your lateral load? You leave it unchecked. Uh, the, the slab we is assumed to uh, transmit the lateral load uh, to the beam and to the other vertical structural members like the structural walls and column. So I hope I've explained everything you need to know about. Um, I'll close this slab property dialog box. I will change to uh, plan view. I've explained everything you need to know about. Um, everything you need to know. About um, I'll explain everything. I'll explain everything you need to know about um, slab insertion on the line in first year. In our next tutorial, we are going to insert um, uh, slab element on our main project. Thank you for watching the video.